Okay, so you know it's orthographic projection. I am not going to talk about the two dimension one. You know the two dimension where you get the views. This is what we call the auxiliary shapes. Auxiliary shapes are shapes like these ones, pyramids. This I know you've seen, but you haven't seen the real shape. And why they call them auxiliary? Because you'll be able to see three sides, you know, when it's sitting at truncated angles like that. But I will demonstrate with this one. They can also give you a prism. What is a prism? The difference between this one and that one is that a prism has got all the edges parallel to each other. They don't go to the apex. You see, this one has got the apex. What you need to understand on this, whether pyramid or prism, is what's the shape. Yeah, what's the shape of the pyramid or the prism at the bottom? And that's what we call the auxiliary shape. All right. So in any question that you're going to receive, like here, there's this one. It's also one of the solids. But for you to know what shape it is, you have to understand. Once they give you the sign here, like diameter, you already know that this thing is it's a cylinder, <laughs> of which a cylinder is round. So you expect to see around when you stand that side or you stand that side. You know, there's a circle here and a circle here. It's something, you know, sitting like that. So when I say left view, you, you are going to see the circle here if you're looking for the left. And if I say right view, you see the circle here. So it depends with the question whether it's first or third angle projection. Do we know the difference? <clears throat> In first angle projection, the front is given. In fact, both of them, first and third, the front is given. They can either ask for left or right. You see this example here. They can either ask you to project right view or left view. In a question where they ask for a right view, you must know that this is in third angle projection. Because in third angle projection, they will never ask they will never ask for a left view because a left view is given as a front view. You're getting the point. Third angle projection, the front is a left. So it has already been given. They, they can only ask for a right view. And we know if we are to do third angle projection, we do, we do this. The top sits up here. The front will be here, which is now your left view. And then the right next, which is when you stand here. So when you start looking from right, if it's a cylinder, you need to show me that you see, you know, a circle, but on this side, but not all of it, because this thing is sitting on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's on the ground. And when you stand here, I don't think you see the bottom of this part. You see, you'll be able to see the half of that and all of this from the right side. That's third angle projection. When we come to first angle projection, the front view is a right view. In first angle projection, the front view is your right view. So they will never ask for a right view again in first angle projection. They will never ask for a right view in first angle projection. When you hear left view, just know that what you have been given is a right, which is your front. And that means that I'm going to do in first angle projection. Then you put your front here, which is now your right, okay? And the top view will come here, and what do you put here? Left. But I want you to correlate and look at those two. Yes, the front is here. I've seen students projecting to the left of this going this side. You will never do that. It's very wrong because whether in third angle projection or first angle projection, the front is always on the left of your other side view. Can you see the way they are sitting here? Same here, look. The front must always be on your left hand side. You cannot project to the left. You always take from the front to the right, regardless of first or third angle projection. If you start going this side, you are wrong. That's the setup. So initially, you have to understand the question, is the examiner asking for first or third angle? Sometimes it doesn't even mention like third angle. It's just going to say project the right view. You hear my point here. Immediately you hear right view. You know that, oh, my front is a left. It has been given. Let me copy this. 
then he needs me to look from the right hand side of the front. Then that should be in third angle, even not mentioned. And then the other question can say, given the following solid, what, what, without mentioning whether it's in first or third, project the left, project the left view. That case, we know that the front is a right, and because they are asking me for a left, I must do in first angle projection. It's only those two. There's no other projection that they will ask you, other than first or third. Why? Because when we are doing the projection or marking, as markers, we look at the layout to see. If you mess up with your top view, you maybe you put it somewhere where it's not supposed to be. It's wrong. Already I'm showing you that the top view will be on top if we are drawing in third. So this question of mine here, they asked for, I can't remember, I'm going to read there. They're asking for right view, I think. It's a right view. So if it's a right view, already you can see my setup is not right because I left the space here. I was supposed to draw this thing lower, down, so that I leave space for my top view here. You see the planning wasn't right because I'm too used to first angle projection where I always bring my top down. First angle, the top must be here. So because we are supposed to do in third, they are asking this question if you read it on page 130, 132 in the textbook. Page 132. The examiner asked for right view. Already I know that I'm doing third angle projection. Clear on that part. Okay, so I'm going to clean. Then I'll tell you that here we have three solids maybe welding together. And then the thing is, we are looking at the three at the same time. So what shape is seen in full and what shape will be in hidden lines. You have to make sure you start thinking out of perspective. Remember when I started teaching, I said for you to know that you're not drawing, you must start visualizing in three dimension. Yes, it's given like a two dimension, but this thing is a solid like, like this. Exactly this thing you're looking at is this piece that is sitting here sitting like that. Can you see? Check. Though it wasn't chopped until the end, it was chopped somewhere. So there was a corner coming, then it was chopped. So the way it's cut is a bit different. But it's octagon. The shape can tell you. It's an octagon base, octagon prism. And I can tell you that you cannot draw the front view before the auxiliary shape. You are wrong. Every time you are copying a question, start with the auxiliary view. If you were here when I was drawing this, we're going to see. I first have to draw this, and then after that project, what? Right? Down. To get the shape here of, of how it looks, you can see the edges. When it comes to a cylinder, you can draw without a circle, or otherwise, you can also as well do a circle this side. I'm going to draw a circle here of diameter 50. That circle is the auxiliary view of this cylinder. There's no way I can draw it here because it's tilting that way. It means this is cylindrical, it's round now. Then on top of the cylinder, this is sitting, going that way. Can you see? There are two, uh, two shapes, this and that. But the cylinder is going this way, then on top of it, then the uh, prism is sitting. Then they are saying there's this other green one here. It's an hexagon prism, meaning prism is also going parallel like that. In the question, if you read, they have given the length that is 33 millimeters long. And it's sitting centrally in front here. It's sitting centrally in front, but it has got a length. Can you see? Check. Of 33. So I don't expect you to show me the length on the front. The length will be seen way. When we go to the right, I'll see how long this thing is. So it's a matter of understanding the question. There's no shortcuts or any other way around other than understanding which part is it, how long, how is it looking. So that's why we didn't show the length, but the question says. So when you go to the right hand side, you'll be able to see how long this thing is. You'll be able to see the circle, can you see, for the cylinder. Because now you are viewing it from that side. Here you can't see on the front. There will be other questions. This will come. Recent papers, they are asking mostly these pyramids. Eh? The pyramids, 
They also come in different auxiliary shapes. You see, you understand first the base. And before you get it, you draw that first. <clears throat> then you project and get your shape. Fine, once you understand, they can cut it or just give you the, the way it is like this. Examiner can say, okay, this is all the shape. Maybe sitting here or sitting that way, whichever. Sometimes they are giving you sitting flat, you see. Don't get confused because students are now getting used to truncating, truncating at the end. But when you see the paper, they bring it flat like this. It means you're just doing like a normal 2D orthographic. Means that the auxiliary view of this becomes my top view at the same time. Are you with me? Because it's sitting flat. I'm not able to see like three dimensional. It's going to be the auxiliary view, again, the top view, because it's sitting on the ground. Okay, any questions before I go now to which part will be visible? That's the tricky part because you have to know. Okay, if I'm looking from right, what do I see in full? What should be outlined and what should not be outlined? Then once you know that, we can start to project. For now, you understand the views. This is always going to be given to you. The front is an important view and it is always given. And you cannot draw the front before its auxiliary views are drawn. Because you extract your front from the auxiliary views. So I taught you module two. I taught you how to draw polygons. You remember the correct methods I did in this class. So those polygons are the ones that you're going to apply now. Only those that were not here when I started the chapter. These shapes we did, octagon across corners, across the flats. We used all these six squares. A square, we did hexagon, inside the circle and outside the circle. It's these methods that you're going to apply. So you must go back to module two and you practice and see how to do it. Fine. Okay, so let's see now. Because we are looking from the right hand side, and I've told you that my setup wasn't right. So what we we'll do, I'm not supposed to, I was supposed to draw here. Check. You see now. So it was poor planning because I thought it's face down. Then I left space for my top. So in your exam, before you even start answering, understand first angle or third angle, then you know which side to push your front, whether up or down. So already I, I've got no space up there for my top view if I do in third angle. And I really want to do in third angle. I don't want to go this way, left view. Why? We want to see the cut. That's why the examiner asked for right. To see the cut, to see how it's cut here, you see? Because if I go here, the cut is hidden completely because it's behind the cylinder. I won't be able to see the cut if that prism is sitting on the cylinder, if I look from the left. You agree with me? The only way to see this prism is looking from its right hand side. So we'll stick to that. I'll force myself to get the top. <laughs> it's too far. <laughs> we'll see. Now, what do you see when you're looking at the right hand side? You know, my skill, my strategy is that I do understand there are three solids here. One is a cylinder, which is the biggest of the three, right? The next is this one, which is octagon, prism. Then there's the hexagon, prism, which is now going deeper that way. So I am not going to start with a smaller piece. I usually start with a big item. And you must follow me like that and you will never be wrong. Step by step. Don't project too many lines at the same time. You will confuse yourself. Even you call me to look at your page. There's millions of lines. I won't know which line is for what, you know. Deal with a piece, you know, at a time. So we do the cylinder, I finish. Then I come to this piece, we finish. Then we come to this piece, we finish. Then we can now identify which piece is visible now. Which one will be in hidden lines? Because now they are mixed. Then you change your lines to hidden details, whichever lines are supposed to be in hidden details. Cylinder. The concept of drawing a cylinder, don't forget, is the concept you are going to use to draw any hollow places, you know where there's a hole. If they say it's a block and there's a hole, even this one, if I drew a hole here, that method that we use here is the method you will forever use 
as long as there's an opening which is round, drilled. Even if it's a small circle, you want to use the method I'll show you here. All right, no other way. Okay, so I'm going to show you there are two methods, but ellipse, if you know, it can also help if you know the ellipse. But if you want to get away with the ellipse, you must use the first method I'm going to do now. We are looking from the right hand side, okay? Let's assume we don't have this block and we don't have this one, okay? It's just the cylinder for now. We assume we don't have these two, just the cylinder. And then looking from the right hand side, if we assume this is a cylinder, it's round and it's not cut, ne? it's round and it's sitting that way. You are looking here. Do you see that you see the circle? All of it. Yes. Yes, because that it's round. They're saying it's round. There's also another circle here. But at the bottom, you see the entire circle in outer lines, for, for instance, because we're assuming this is not there. Then when we come to the top circle, you're not going to see all of the circle here because this thing is sitting on the ground. You only see the highest half of the circle, the highest half of the circle. Are we together? The highest half of your circle, I'm going to draw the circle here for you because that is the auxiliary shape of this. Then you know that the highest half is this half. Are you with me? That is this one. The lowest half is this one. I won't see because of the ground. I won't see the lowest side of this other side of the circle. I'll see the highest half. You can see. And when I say the highest half, We'll draw it in construction. Project this line and that line, and then draw the circle of diameter fifth. The highest half that we are going to see is this half here, the green half. And how do you know I'm going to see this one? First thing, you are looking from the right hand side, right? You need to go with the main center line. Can you see the main center line? parallel to the height of the cylinder, the main center line. Just tilt like this. Which one is right? Is it not this one? Yes. So it means that when we look at this shape, the circle, this is what we call our right side. But if I was looking from the left hand side, I was going to turn and look at it this way. Can you see? Then this would be my left and this would be my right. You go where this line is facing is where you are also looking. For you to know right or left. Fine. Because the next time they'll give us a cylinder going this way. Okay? And the circle is here. This is my main. Already you can see. If you are looking from the left hand side of the cylinder, you know that this will be your left view on the circle. And that part is what would be like closer to you than the right. And if we were looking on the right of this cylinder, then it changes because the main is here. I'm facing where it is going. Then my right side would be this side. It would be closer to me than the left half. Huh? Can you see? Okay. Yes. If you can see, I'll start to project because... If you understand that right and left when it comes to this one, I'm not saying this is this is the right of the front. Are you with me? Yes, right of the front. I will see the the bottom like fully. We are doing. It's gonna be a full circle there. With the cylinder, guys, we must divide in two of divisions. You know how to divide it. Yes. Probably you can choose the set square because this thing is at an end. We see use the radius. Use the radius of a circle, okay, much quicker. Radius of a circle and start using this point. It's one, two, three, four. So what you do with the radius of the circle, put your compass here. You strike one here and one here. Can you see? Then you come to this point here, you strike one here and one here. You come to that point, you strike one and one. When you are here, you strike one and one. You see, you go through all your four quadrants. With the radius of a circle, you just put like here. You strike, you strike down. You come here, you strike this arc, you strike that one. 
you come here, you strike here, you strike down, you see. So you have these divisions, which would be 12 divisions of a set. Clear with the radius. After that, you are going to work with use your ruler, but make sure the angle is correct. If they tell you that this is sloping at 30 degrees here, it means here it's how much? Six. These two lines must add 90 degrees. So if it's tilted at 45, it will go to 45 this way. So if they say 30 degrees, then all these lines here are six. So I'm going to draw the lines at 30 degrees through the divisions. The first division is this one. You can see my line already coming aligning to this point at that point of the cylinder, which are very important, and it's those points that are going to give us a say. So we go to, next, you can give a number. We usually number, let's say zero, then we start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You number them. Then bring all your divisions, and to it cover, they cover the length of the cylinder to the bottom. Let's say that's division one. Can you see? To the bottom and there. Then you go to two and ten. Then the easy way you can also do is two, zero, one, two. Instead of going ten, then it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, half, half. Much easier. I will tell you why much easier. Instead of going to all the numbers. So it's clockwise, then anti-clockwise number. Half, half. So it's two and two, one and one, three and three. The three and three is already here. Then we go to four and four. You bring your line down. Let's say four is here and another four. Then it's through five. have all the divisions. Another trick, how to get this thing right here. How are we going to get the right view correct and right? We agree we are seeing the bottom in full. So let's start drawing that bottom circle first. And let's just project all these points. Zero, you know that's number zero. There's zero on top and zero down. Then I've got point one and point one up. Then it's two and Two. Then it's three on the center, three, four, and four, five, five, six, six. So we're together. So I'm only focusing at these numbers for now. Then they can give me the shape of the circle that's set. But to get the shape of the circle, another trick is to understand that there is an important line on your auxiliary view that you must always identify before you even start drawing. Without that line, you won't get the shape right center line. It's not going to be the main center line. No. It's the center line parallel to the width or the short side of the shape. You see this? That center line is this one. You are mm -hmm. That line, if you identify, then you, you are going to get it right. So this will be our Y line. I call it a Y line. Very important line. And do not be tempted to use the one going along the length. No, the other one. So, for example, for this prism, you see the way it's facing that way. Its main center is this one. I can't use that as my Y line. When I come to project this prism, the Y line will be, can you see, for the prism, because that's the one parallel to the short or to the width. Is Yeah. So now we are dealing with the cylinder. I can't talk about that Y line. Though both of these two Y lines are going to be representing this Y line here. There's a main center line that will help us get the shapes right. So that Y line I've drawn, it stands for this, and again it stands for, for that. It's a main for, for the three shapes. So are we going to be able to get the Y line? Yes. Once you get the Y line, it's now knowing where are these numbers falling when we come to the Y line here? Are they away from the Y line? What's the distance? You know, that's the secret. Once you know the distance of each point away from the Y line, those are the distances I'll be marking there to get the shape right. If the point is on the Y line, we will mark it on the Y line here. If it's away from the Y line, like number zero, you can see uh, one, 
and one. You can see the distance away from the wire. Those distances you'll be using compass to go mark the right, left, right, left, right, left. Then you connect your points. Fine. Okay. So let's project the bottom numbers. Then we'll get the shape there. You can see the bottom number will start with zero, which is here, horizontal line to this side. So we're going to have a horizontal line. Then it's uh, one. We know this is number one. Then you have number two. Center line, which is no three. <laughs> you see where I'm taking the point from the cylinder, where the numbers are hitting the cylinder. Then you take them that side. Construction lines, you remember, rate is very faint, eh? On the page. Then it's five. The last one is number six from the bottom. This is on the ground. When you finish, you have now to start identifying the first line there is a line for zero. Where is zero? Is it away from the Y line or on the Y? On, on the Y line. You just go here and mark point zero there. This is my zero. Then I come to one. How far away from the Y line? Perpendicular. And we see that distance with a compass. Which is, there's one on the right and one on the left of the Y line. Now I must be looking at the Y line this way. It's right, left. Yeah. So it's one, one. If I had 11 here, I was going to say 11 on the left. But for now, I'm just calling them one, one. You see, it's fine. But if the shape is not round, it's something, you know, awkward, you need to have different numbers so that you know this one is my right hand side, this is my left. Looking at the Y line. So you take that distance, you go with it here, put your compass on the Y line, you mark one and another one. This is your one and that's, uh, this one is your one. Then we go to, to some things. There is point two. Come on the auxiliary, if you get the distance away from the Y line, that distance. You go with your compass, put your compass here, you mark point two and point two. So let me not put numbers because they will confuse you. So it's zero, one, one, two, and two. You agree? Three, which is the widest part, that's this one. You go and put your compass there, you mark three, and then you mark three. You can see the shape is coming out. Then number four, for sure the distance from Y line to four is the same distance with two. If you want, you can just align to say, oh, there was two there, so four will be here. There was one, so five will be here. There is four, another one here, it's a circle. This point will be aligning with another point here. My last point is six, which is on there. Y line, so six is on the Y line. Then you can already see the shape of the circle has been formed. Free hand or flexi curve. If you wish to use the ellipse method, it's gonna be smooth and it's easy. I don't know if you remember the ellipse. How do we do that one? Already the point C, if you remember my point C and D, the ellipse, it's those two points. You remember about the ellipse. Then to get the other distance here, you need to come here and get that distance, which we call the W or the width of the circle. <coughs> that distance here, because that is our Y line, can you see? So if you take that distance and go and then make <coughs> it here, this now becomes your Y line. Then you have point A and point B. Then you use the ellipse method if you know the ellipse. You get it right. If only the cylinder is not cut, <coughs> you can use the ellipse smith. But where they cut the cylinder, that is the only way. You get my point here. It's up to you. If it has been cut, you can't use the ellipse, you can use this method. 
The shape that you get here is the same shape you get there. For, for those ones that are not cut. So I'm not going to go to the ellipse. I'm just saying you could also get it using the ellipse. Now, I'm not going to outline this for now. I know that it's supposed to be outlined, but I'll leave it freehand in construction line. You know why I'm leaving it in construction? Because there's this piece that some pieces there will remain in hidden details because of the prism in front. You know, you are looking from here. The cylinder is a bit at the back. So I know there will be part of the cylinder that will come and put in hidden details. For now, let's leave it under what? Construction, meaning very light. When we finish, then we'll come and outline. Fine, that circle is created. So mm. um, how do you determine the distance from, say, um, the drawing to the wire line? From here, yes. you say. And I'm saying from from here to here, to uh, any anyway, or in, anywhere you can draw. You understand me? Where you draw, it can be far or anywhere. It's fine. There's no specific distance from here to here, no. at any position. As long as you are not disturbing with the drawing, you can even push it somewhere. With it. But the distance will be taken from that one. Then. Let's do this other one. You see, there is a top circle that must be drawn here. And then we'll, we are going to connect the points. You project. I'll start with six. It's fine. You see, that's why I'm saying your lines must be very light because you are going through the drawing now. So point six and all the other points, you make sure that they are very light as much as you can. This is the horizontal line here. Across, as long as you go across your Y line, then you can leave it. That one. Then I've got point 0.5 as well. Extend. That's line 5. Then it's 4 on the cylinder. Okay, so let's say this is our line number 4. Let's go. Right. Three, two, and then the last one is one and zero. There's one way. I'm just tired of this one. Yeah. Anyway, horizontal lines, eh? Not freehand. You use your T-square. Again, you can start marking from Y line or align with those numbers there because it's the same shape. What you could also do, if you are looking for six, you just see six at the bottom was in the Y line. That was our six and that zero. So six is here on the top circle. You see, just like that, align them. When I go to five, there is five from the bottom. So I'll just align with the ruler and go and mark five here and this other side through this one, mark the four as well. This was our four here. You go underline, you mark four. And this side, you go up, you mark four. Otherwise, you still need to go back there. There is three. Where was three? It was this two name. Three, three. You can go straight with your ruler and mark on three. And that side, you mark on three. And then it continues because the next point will be up near this one and in a line with that one. Mm -hmm. The other one, I think we are missing one line. Yeah, two, three. Three shots. Okay. So this one is number three. Mm -hmm. Three. Then this one was supposed to be here. This one here. And this is zero. This one here. This one is three. Then you have this one. This one. You can see you align them eh, together. Like the numbers are the same. Then the circle there, I'm also going to put it hidden for sure because, yes, it's like if we assume this one is a cylinder, if we assume it's, it's round there, eh? this thing is sitting here, look, and then you are looking from the, right, so they are part of the circle that you won't see. So I'm not, I'm not going to outline also, but I'll leave it in construction. We'll come and outline everything, but the bottom piece will surely be hidden. 
but I'll come and fix that. Then a cylinder, we don't connect six with six, one with one, no, unless it's these shapes. You see the prisms, because you are able to see the corners. With a cylinder, you only connect the outside edge. Can you see? Only. So I'll do also in construction, three with three. So what you're looking at now, it's this, the lowest part of the cylinder, then going a bit higher, you know, out. This way. That's how it's sitting. Okay. Yeah. We are done with the cylinder. And I mean that every opening, let's say if they said there was a hole here, there will be time they give you hidden details to see. There is a small circle here. Also, you do the same. That small circle, you must divide in 12 divisions, bring your numbers there, project and mark, 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 mark. There's no way using a compass straight and draw a circle. It's very hard. It's not oblique. No. <laughs> Any questions? You understand? When you understand? Okay, if you understand, the rest will understand. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go and do this one now. We are done with this Y line. Finish. We are looking at this shape and look at the way it's facing then you already know that the height of this is here and the width is this one, so the Y line you identify. First thing you do in the exam is get your Y line and then start putting numbers because I will number this shape, you see the coordinates, the way we number the same. So I'll come to the octagon and I'll say, okay, this is number zero. Or we can say A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D. You know you can do that way. You can use alphabet, numbers, whatever. But this must be very light, you know. Even those dots I'm putting there, you shouldn't make them dark because you are messing up with your work and it's untidiness. We want light things, you know, even numbers, unless the examiner wants them. It's not necessary to put numbers, but you can put very light numbers for you to just see. If you are okay with that, like people that are not drawing, they don't put numbers. They already know this is this, this is that. Mm -hmm. Coming to this shape, which I'm now relating as this one, though it was not chopped all the way to the end, it was chopped somewhere, you know, can you see, according to the question. Unless I cut from here to there, then it will make this one. So there's a difference. <laughs> there's a difference. Number the, when you look at the auxiliary shape, I brought the lines at 60 degrees down. Can you see point A? And point A at the bottom. Yes. yes. So you have A and A down. B and B. You know all this. Mm -hmm. Then I've got this point B and B. But there's a cut here. Whenever something has been cut, it won't be shown on your auxiliary view. You must take the cut up. So that you see exactly at what position was this shape cut. So you can see the cut was not on any of the edges. It cuts somewhere in between P and C. So you have to go introduce the cuts there because it's none of the edges was cut. So you go at 60 degrees, using this corner where it was starting to cut there, you take your line up, the cut started there. You can say X1 and X2, maybe this is X1 and this is X2. Bearing in mind that the cut did not go to the bottom. I don't expect you to have X1, X2 at the bottom. It only cuts the top surface. So the cut is only for the top edge. Yeah. Then you go to C. Can you see point C? And point C. Then it's this one, D, D. E, E. Then looking from the right hand side, for sure, you must now identify what piece is going to be seen. The all of this shape will be shown. You are there. You will see how all the corners are meeting. Except when we come to the bottom, we won't see everything. When we come to the bottom, now we know right half will be seen. Right half of the main center line, you know, the way I say it. <coughs> Okay, so we are going to focus on these uh, alphabet letters up here only, projects, and then connect all of them fully visible because you will see. 
you are looking exactly at the shape. So you take your, your projection lines to the right hand side, <clears throat> starting with E. This is line E, construction. D, so for some reasons, D is lining up with another line. It's fine. That's my drawing anyway. Let's say here. That's my D. Then I'll go to point C, a bit lower than the other line. Let's say our C is here. It's fine. I'll use that one in C. Then cut. You see the cut X. You must take it. So I'll use this line. It's fine for now because it's passing through the same line. I'll use this line as my X. My X line. Coincidentally, they are meeting the D. Can you see B also? I can use the same line. But you need to be accurate. This is not, uh, it's a free hand, this one. So things are meeting up. And then it's point A, which is above. And then make sure your auxiliary shape and these lines are not meeting. You don't cut through that shape. I'll use this one. Yeah, it's fine. I'll use that one as my A. Yeah. Again. Back to the auxiliary view, identify how far from Y line, how far from looking at the Y line, the way it's tilting. Okay, the Y line is like this. So looking from the right hand side of the main, you see the main, main center of this shell. Right is here, right? Right viewing. Can you see my arrows? Right viewing of this T square. Right? Yes. But when we come, to the Y line, it means I have to face the arrows, then my right, left, you know, when you're matching. You got that point. The next time it's going to be left view. If it's left viewing, look at this. I'm viewing left of the auxiliary view. So if I go there, right hand side will be here. Can you see when I'm standing there? This is right hand side points, left hand side points. Huh? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, okay. So let's mark point E on the Y line. Can you see? There. So you go with E and just come and mark here. Let me use another kind of maybe green. <coughs> you got your point E. Next is D. How far? Same distance from the Y line. Take that with your compass. You go with that line D. Put your compass there in mark. D and D. Using that distance. Then you go to C. That's the widest part. CC. You know, okay, we have C and C, C and C. So you go with this line. Put your compass here. You are going to mark, let's say, C is here and somewhere there on the same line. So you have E, D, and D, E, and E, and then cut, eh? the cut. That's why I said the cut is important. We want to know how far was the cut from the Y line. You take that distance. There's X1 on your right hand side if you are standing here. X1 on your right, X2 on your left. You go with the cut with that distance. You come here, put your compass there. It's a bit inside, so you can say it's maybe here, and the other cut is somewhere here. Okay, that is x1, x2, x1, x2, and then it's b. Obviously, b and d will be in the same line. This shape is you know, b and d will be in the same line. Or else, you can take that distance one mark. You come here, there's d, you go up. From this one, you go to this one is out. Let me move the cut a bit out to see. And then the other one in line with this one. Yeah, then they cut here. But your measurements will talk to you, you know, as you are marking. For sure, the cut is more out than B. Can you see? B is a bit inside because that is a distance to B. That's a distance. Then this is 
So the shape is zero. It's out. E, the next is x1, x2, then, you know, like that, until the midpoint. So you will be marking. So your last point is point A, which is that point here. And we agreed that we'll see everything. So you connect your point. Because you are looking from that side. You just have to connect. You'll see how E goes to D. And how D goes to C. How C goes to the cut. X2, X2 to that one. And then that one to that one. And then, yeah, something like that. The cut is here. I think you can see the surface eh? similar to that. Then you do the bottom of the prism where there's no X1 and X2. You also project your lines to the right hand side. You start with E. So let me use my free hand. Line for E, line for D, C, then B, there's already a line to this one, and the last one is A. You see how many lines? That's why you must be very neat. There's millions of lines. It must be light. Too many lines. So at the bottom, E is on the Y line. Just go, mark your E on this line. Next is D, just below the other D if you want, you know, align or come and do the same marking. You already have D at the top, so you just go there and say, okay, there was D here. So my other D is here. There was another D, you know, in line. C, also follow the other C. You go with this line. C was here. So you go and mark on this line and C. That's here. C and on this side, just below that one, C. Then it's B, which will be just below that B. When you go here, I think B was, this is a cut, B was this one. Yeah. Come down, but make sure the lines are meeting somewhere here. B. And another one, B. And your last point is A on the midpoint, on the center. A. But what are we seeing? We are seeing, again, back to the viewing, back to the arrows. Which side are we going to see? Which, which letters are we going to see? This or that? You can see. It's the bottom half, can you see? Yes, E, D, because that's where you are. You see how C goes to D, D to E, A to D, D to C. That's the right half of the main solid. Yeah, the other side is behind hidden details. So I'm going to connect E, D, D to C. But C to there, it's what? Yeah. Then solid. Then we can join them. We need now to join. I've just drawn the roof on the floor. I haven't yet joined them. I need to join them. But to join them again, I must know what is solid and what's hidden. Because to join them, because we are looking here, how C, how E goes to E, solid. How D and D are going to D down. And how C and C are going to sit down. But I'm not going to see the other part, A to A, B to B, hidden details. Why? Because it's on the left end. So we are going to see E to E, D to D, D to D, C to C, C to C. Then A into A, dash line. This one is coming somewhere there, dash line. Then cut. A cutting 
edge should be solid. You know, whenever we cut, it's a solid line in drawing. So you have to outline the edge. X1 and X2, there, it's a solid line. It's a cutting edge. It was starting to be chopped there. This piece up there was not chopped. It's that piece there. But in drawing, if ever you have shown hidden details, there's no need of doing the hatching. I think you've seen other guys doing the hatching. Eh? Follow the question. Like this question, I'm not supposed to show hidden details because they didn't say. So if the examiner has not said show hidden details, it means he wants you to hatch the cuts, meaning that you remove your hidden details and you're supposed to do this, you see. But we cannot have the hatching lines with hidden lines together. Drawing does not allow. If there's hidden lines, you don't need to do the hatching. If it says show hidden details. But if a question doesn't say whether to show hidden details, then you have not to show them, or you have to hatch and not show the hidden details. It's much quicker. All right. So we are going to just remove the 45 lines. Those are the section lines or cutting plane, cutting through the, the part. If I can tell you the whole question is 25, I told you this is 25 marks. Five marks is to copy these shapes. And from the five marks, I must look at your line work, neatness, correctness, accuracy. It's correct. Because if this is wrong, just that, everything is wrong. Because you have reduced your octagon. You have made it big. Everything will be wrong. So from five marks, you can end up getting one or two. Because we look at your pencil work, neatness, correctness, you know, those things. The other ten marks is four. This one also, is it neat? Is it correct? Is it, you know, those things. We look at that. Then you get ten if it's clean. But now it's incomplete because I haven't done this piece, you see. And I haven't outlined the, the cylinder. It's not finished. Another ten marks will be for your top. So let's finish, and the top view, I'll guide you on how you get it. I won't finish, but I'll guide you, you'll get it right. So coming to this, they said the prism has got a length of uh, 33, and is sitting centrally beneath the cylinder, half-half. So there is my cylinder, you just mark half of 33, half of 33. You understand? So you, you come here and mark, let's say it's ending somewhere here, and maybe somewhere there. You go project, can you see the projection? You project, it's this corner, that corner, that corner. There's already a line. You project this one here. It's a solid. And the top one. That's the top one. Or oh, the top one is here, so it shouldn't go all the way up. Can you see? The top one will end here. Then you make it solid. You measure to whatever point, bring it down, solid. Why am I saying solid? Even this is a solid, you see? It's an edge. So it's one, two, three solid lines. You will see this face, that face, yes. looking that side. So this line here must also be solid. You see why I said part of the cylinder will be in hidden lines? The part of the cylinder that's going to be in hidden lines is this piece here, because of the block. I'll punch you there. Then you are going to outline this piece and outline that and through here. Then you see all the way up and through there. It depends if the cylinder is big or what, so this thing was supposed to be solid. And here. But this drawing is big. If you draw it nice, the octagon comes out here. You will see yourself which one comes out. Then here, then hidden and choose there, then solid, then hidden lines for the cylinder. For your 10 marks, then there's another 10 marks for top. You are just half, not halfway. You know, if this one is done right, the top view is easy because you work with projection. You need 45 degrees line, remember about the 45, which will come somewhere here. You know, I can demonstrate here, right? But please, it must go up because I don't have space. So I'm saying you do 45, but it must be on the on that quadrant because our setup is top, front, right. You see, 
So I'm saying your 45 must be here. This is for third. Yeah. So if your 45 is there, you'll be going up to 45, then bend. You see? So now because my 45 sorry, is here in this quadrant, we need to do the top here, which in actual sense is supposed to be there. Yes, according to third angle projection. The first thing you project, guys, is your center line or your Y line. You see this Y line? Into the 45 degrees. And that is your Y line on the top view. That's the first thing, center line. Whichever point you have the 45, then you can go to the cylinder. Looking at the cylinder the way we started from the top, do you agree that you see the top more than the bottom of the cylinder? Yes. So I expect a full circle here because you are looking from the top. Meaning you project all the points from there vertically down. Now in our case, we'll be going up, eh? vertically up. Like that, and the zero. Then you go to that shape. Where is zero there? If I want point zero here. Where is zero there? You remember the zero was in the Y line somewhere. It's there. Come, that's line zero. We'll meet with zero and six. You go to number one. I think one was the next, I think these two points. You come with your, you know, two lines like that. So the first one is this one. Come, meet one here. And five, right? Remember we said they would be lining up. Yeah, one and five. One and five. So you can mark twice, yes. Then you should work in one minute for the reason. Meet, meet like how? Here, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. They have to, it's one point. To get a point here is this one and that one must meet here, always. If it's A and A, when I come to this shape, I'll be saying A with A, where they meet is a shape, you know. Mm. So there's another one that I need to do. You know this one, eh? It was one, and then there was one here. So bring to 45, and then where they meet is one. It's one, zero, one, then five. You see? Mm -hmm. Then it's four. Four, we know that it was this one here. Four and four. You go down. Where it meets four is here. You can see there is line four and line two. Can you see? Four and two. This is two, that is four. If you want to go back there to four, you still have the same point here. Okay. Then here on the other side, yes, there is also this one here. Somewhere. This one. So you go through that one. And see, we already met. Oh, he's talking about the point here. Yes, that's right. So, let's switch one. It's that one that we feel. It's this one, eh? Yes. No, this four is fine. And this two is fine. This one is in the wrong position. Am I right? Yeah. They're going to mark this one, this one. I think a line is missing. Let's check. I'm talking about this point, which is four, must meet two. This is a point. Or oh, three is wrong. Three. Which one? Three we haven't done. Three is not done. Yeah, three is not done. This will be your three. Three is in the center. Yeah. In the end, once you get your points, I think there's a point somewhere here that's missing. You are going to connect these points here, you know, to make a circle. Like that. Yes, I know you're missing another thread. I'm guiding you this one. You see? It will be somewhere here. But whichever point you create here, you are going to connect them. Six with six, five with five, four with four, three. All of them, you are going to have them there. Then connect with a free hand. And we have said that because we are looking from the top, we'll be able to see this thing solid. Yes, the first circle. Then the bottom is here. Can you see it? The bottom you project six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Again, there will be a circle, but you won't see all of this. We'll see the highest one, you know, the lowest one in hidden details. So you see something here. And then it will be, yeah, solid but hidden detail. 
then you connect how to get that is zero with zero yeah next one with the two ones coming there's one and one two with the two coming you know they'll make a point then you connect then you go to the that thing <laughs> prism prism looking from the top we agree that still we'll see the top surface fully visible this thing sitting like that and you're on top you see you see everything you will see everything here because it's like that from the top surface again you project your numbers it's too many lines e you bring your e down with e whatever e is there you get a point d bring d down with whatever d is there are two d's here they will meet c you know like that and the cut will also be shown here so you have a shape coming up here and then you come to the lowest point then you can connect them the way i did there that's how it works point by point. point by point but please before you start dealing with the bottom numbers finish those ones and connect otherwise you miss connect make a shape the time you come here you have already connected your top points together because there's no way a here can go and connect with c or with a here no this a goes to b b to c you know as they are lining up here so after you get your points for the top surface connect with your ruler then come to the bottom surface again you still do a where is a there 45 a but in our case we'll be going up 45 this way a they meet the shape will be formed exactly like you see there so you will try this one at home i would love you to try this until page 133 there are two have you done page 133 in the book 132 133 it's the same concept if you can do those two i can just check or you can ask me to see some other time when you're free what are you writing tomorrow and this one wednesday please at least you have time to practice yeah you can check on me tomorrow show me what you do today on this one and then i will, I will help you on how to do it because my time is limited people i'm supposed to be online now mm -hmm.